I've been like literally a fan for so long. <laughs> so knowing her to do this, I was like, yeah, I'm like not free today, maybe like Friday. <laughs> so I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, you know, you're just really cool. So that's really all cool. I can say. <laughs> to fucking play a show yeah I, I can't wait for like tour bidding and like festivals mm-hmm. to happen and i don't know it'll just be so that's like those days are my favorite i don't know if you've been able to even have that yet because again this is like your debut record but a day where like five of your friends mm-hmm. are playing on different stages and you just like have a beer and you're like mm-hmm. oh yeah it's up like i'm gonna stand side stage for this and then i'm gonna go say what's up to maddie and then i'm gonna like i yeah. can't wait. It's just so, it's like summer camp, but yeah, without any of the fucking closeted angst and like, I just, mm. I can't wait. So Yeah, that tour is going to be so sick. Like, oh my God. I really want it to happen. I really want it to still happen. Like the venues we were going to play, it's just like, man, it's like, oh, I, when it, when literally like the only reason why I cried because I knew I just didn't, couldn't play that because of this year. And I was like, fuck, we're so close to that actually happening and. My sound guy posted a video of him, like, wearing a mask, strapping a microphone to my ass, and was like, we were supposed to play Madison Gar- Square Garden this year, but instead we're, like, doing this, like, TV now. <laughs> oh, my, that's still sick, to be fair. <laughs> it is. It, and, and that shit's been fun. It's been fun, especially, like, for somebody like you who just is good at the internet and has, like, a genuine, I feel like you do a really good job of being like you know this is a piece of my personality and like here's my songs and shit instead of it being like ad mats ad mats ad mats ad mats and like manager running it uh Mm -hmm. I feel like it's been fun to be creative like to no one but the Mm -hmm. the real shit is going to be when we're all at like some Mm -hmm. sweaty ass festival like disgusting like yeah in for mm. real people <laughs> it'll be so fun okay. like I can't wait to play but also stay and just like enjoy it and just be able to go to an actual festival and get like fucked oh I know so- I would go see like my I would go see the worst concert right now if it was safe. yeah I don't care I yeah. literally yeah. don't care that's so fucked up like I had put it out of my mind that we were supposed to tour together mm, yeah we were supposed to be in May and be on tour and mm-hmm. that would have been so sick I was honestly so terrified for that tour though because um 1975's fans are so fanatical and like Maddie was like it's gonna be cool like don't worry they're gonna love you but I was like a lot of my set is going to be really dark. My album wasn't going to be out yet. Like I was kind of stressed, but also just so excited. Mm -hmm. I had like all these plans um, and was going to start like an internet riff about how I was like Maddie's stalker. I was going to like, I was going to pretend like he wouldn't talk to me the whole tour. It was going to be so fun. But yeah, I think, I think I was pretty nihilistic pretty early where I was like, Oh shit this is not going to happen. Like nothing's going to happen. And like there, I had a couple conversations where, cause I was supposed to go to Japan and then, and everyone was like, well, we're kind of scared to go to Japan cause our crew's so big. And if someone gets stuck, then like we all can't do the show and we won't be able to get into Australia after. And I was like, I was like, I guess that makes sense. But it was kind of pushing to just fly anyway. Like I wanted to like escape America, which probably wouldn't have been smart, but, um, But then I just kind of, like, Mm -hmm. dissociated. Like, my emotions weren't as connected with my body, where I didn't break down, uh, which I should have. That came later. I was just kind of, like, you know, like, robot. Like, oh, this is my life now. I have to stay inside forever. Okay, let's let's go. Uh, And then only got depressed, like, two months ago. So, (laughs) Uh, yeah, it was it was fucking wild. Yeah, no, I think I only realized how much I like wasn't ready to like go on that tour because I, I just never like fathomed like how big those shows were going to be. Like I literally like haven't been playing for that long and then all of a sudden, you know, all of that. Um and being away from like my friends and family, like something that I'm not, you know, used to. Um and I think I only realized during lockdown I had to kind of, you know spend time with my family and all the times I missed when I was on tour was strange. (laughs) 
Well, I'm curious because Fake It Flowers is your is it, it is your first full length, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. so wild to me because I mean I guess we're not in that different of places. I've had like a lot of different side projects, which isn't really recommended because it distracts people from like you know people could know one of my bands and not me or vice versa and uh but you so I, it's really only like my second full-length album but to have a first mm -hmm. full length album come out over lockdown is so i feel like it's such a unique experience like you one of the most fun parts of playing shows to me is like having the whole audience know the entire record yeah. but i don't know if you think this but i think i think maybe like these records will be way more fun to play live because people memorize oh, yeah. them later. you know when you see somebody like early on a tour and you don't know the record yet and you, and then like a year later you're like fuck they play yeah. all the songs and i wish i could have like been singing along the whole time i feel like mm -hmm. maybe the first like both of our first shows are going to be like oh yeah no definitely it's because like it, like it's lived in do you know what i mean like it's it's like it's aged like fine wine <laughs> if that makes sense. um so everyone I, I just can't wait like i i understand that you probably feel the same way it's just like ah, like it's annoying but I, I i didn't realize how like badly i wanted to play live till i till i got it taken away from me Yeah. yeah, and I was, on, I was on a press trip in February where I was, like, starting, like, what you said about how you didn't know how unprepared you were. Like, I, I was on the press trip and it was just like, oh, my, and I have been on tons of tours. So, and, I had, and I had been off the road just long enough to miss it. But then when I started press in New York in February, I was, like, getting that, like, sweaty anxiety, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, like, I forgot how hard this is and how I'm not going to be home for fucking ever. And, yeah. uh, and so there was like part of me that was sort of like, Oh, I just get to like when I was locked down in my house, my shit was not together like at all. Like I hadn't washed my car in like five years and, uh, don't know how to like cook for myself. Like was eating cereal for every meal. Um, so yeah, there was a part of it that was like, oh, I need to like go home and, and like be an adult, you know? Yeah, I think that's what was like the hardest part, like realizing I literally don't know how to do anything. Like I don't know how to sort money. I don't know how to do this. Like I don't know how to clean my room. Can't even do my bed when I wake up. It's just stupid. <laughs> like um, that was kind of the stressful part. I guess I had, do you live with your parents? Or do no, you live I, li I live... In the same apartment that I've had since I was 18. And oh. it's super small. And I kind of like that. Um, <laughs> and, I've, and I've, like, lived with partners. And I've, I've um, like, I've always kept this apartment, even if I was somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but, but also just, like, that was the other thing. I'm going to move. I'm going to move apartments. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I had kind of kept this apartment as, like, a masochistic, like, why would I pay expensive rent if I'm going on tour forever? And then I was like, wait, I need to also like enjoy my life. Like this. Yeah. So fucking small. Like it's yeah. so small. And I've, I've like, what actually something funny happens here where I share, it's such a small space. Like my neighbors have yelled for me to shut the fuck up in the, like through my window because they don't like when I sing to myself. So I'll, I'll write songs. <laughs> that are like way, way, way higher than I can actually sing because I'm whispering. I'll write oh songs. My God. Again. Like that's how I write. And then I'll go to record him and I'll be like, I can't fucking sing this. Oh my God, why are they so mean? <laughs> I know, it's like, I just want to be like, fuck you. And then some, like one of my neighbors, who, like, I didn't even know he had my number. Or I guess we had texted back and forth, like, there's a leak or whatever. But he was like, congrats on the Grammys. I was like, oh, shit. He, like, <laughs> knows who I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's crazy. <laughs> what was it like, fit, like, being nominated? Where were you at the time? I was asleep. And my mom <laughs> texted me 
uh, like freaking out. That was it. I feel like the coolest part about the Grammys to me was that mm -hmm. like my grandpa, if I'm like, oh my God, I, I toured with Bonnie Bear or like I sang a song with Matt from the national. He's like, who's that? And then he, he called me like freaking out. Like I finally proved to like a whole yeah. section of my family that I like do music. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's crazy. Oh, my days. Because yeah. it's something that everyone knows. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's... Right. Yeah. It's so yeah, fun. that's mad. And it's Have cute. You, Your mom found out first before you did. It's such a classic. <laughs> Have you had a moment like that with your family where, like... I mean, I don't... Yeah, do, you, do your family, like, listen to cool music? Or were you the first one to be, like, check out um, the <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, my mom... My mom knew Pavement, and um, it, but she didn't know them as well as I did. So when I told her, like, oh, my God, I met the guy from Pavement, she's like, yeah, cool. And I'm like, oh. fuck. Um, like, I, this literally happened the other day as well. I was like, oh, my God, you know, Simon Pegg. <laughs> And she's like, who? I'm like, oh, forget it. And she's like, no, tell me. I'm like, no, but it's not, it's not going to matter anyways. <laughs> like, <laughs> the first, like, real show that I did for Punisher was at Roundhouse in London. And, um, and Simon Pegg came with his daughter. And she had on these, like, combat boots that were literally, like, like that much. Like, I just was like, yes. Like, this is how to parent. Like, that she's so, so sick. Cool. They were really? so really awesome. Yeah, but Dude, how do you find Um, well, so like, so he followed me, and I, I didn't know, and I freaked out because I'm like, oh my god, Sean's dead, like, hot fuzz, everything. So I like DM'd him, not like thinking he was gonna respond. And I was like, spaced is like the best thing ever created, and that was like a series he was in. That's just awesome. And he replied saying he liked my music, and then we were like talking back and forth, and then my boyfriend. Um, did the sound on um, Shaun of the Dead and he's got like the original script from the movie and I took a picture of my boyfriend <laughs> was holding this original script and we sent a picture to Simon Pegg and he was like what the hell why do you have that <laughs> and I was like yeah no my boyfriend knows um, my boyfriend dad my boyfriend's dad has worked with you and is working with you right now because they're like working on Mission Impossible. It was strange. It's a really small world, but I'm just like, yeah, I was just freak. I was freaking out because he's like a legend. So I was like, what the hell? Yeah, I like one of the... Only times... I think I can count the times that I've like actually smoked or eaten weed on like one hand because I hate it so much but it's all it's like mm -hmm. I'd say sometimes it's once every six months and sometimes it's once every three years I just have to forget how much I hate it before I do it the next time mm -hmm. but I think I saw Shaun of the Dead in theaters one of the times that I smoked weed and was just oh no 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 my mom made peanut butter weed cookies for me <laughs> and my friends and we, and like my friends are stoners and my mom makes really good edibles and I just was like all right I'm cool like I'll take them and then just fucking like lost my mind I feel like I probably think that the plot of that movie is like totally <laughs> different than what it actually is like, I could not yeah. tell you what happens in that movie <laughs> dude like I yeah I wouldn't understand that edibles are just like they it's like so much more different to smoking weed. It's just so strange. It's like you have an out of body experience. Like um, last time I did it, I like fell asleep wearing like my coat, my jeans, my shoes. And I woke up, I woke up and I just saw like a bunch of aliens like surrounding me and just like watching me as if they were going to operate on me. And I was like, oh my fuck, I'm never doing edibles again. This shit's so whack. <laughs> so you must have had like a, com a very different experience watching Shaun of the Dead <laughs> than I did. Yeah, yeah I, I did that once. I think, well, I smoked weed after seeing the movie Gravity, which I don't <laughs> recommend. It was like after, but yeah, it was like coat, full clothes. My like high school mm -hmm. boyfriend and I woke up like, fully dressed with all the lights on just like how did we 
it's just like you delete you delete yourself for like a night i even yeah. i even like shot weed once and had like oh my god wait we're so on a tangent but i was like there's there's this fancy grocery store here called Erwan where mm-hmm. like it's all the like covid uh paparazzi pictures of celebrities are taken outside of Erwan because it's the fancy mm-hmm. grocery store and nobody is like seen anywhere else but mm-hmm. i but weed is legal here so mm-hmm. i was like on tour and passed an Erwan and was like you know what i want to do i want to spend 45 bucks on two things right now so i i like pulled in got my weird like cookie or something mm-hmm. or like a package of cookies and I was playing in Pomona, which is outside of LA, and I ate the entire package of cookies. And then on stage, I was <gasps> like, I was like, what's happening? And then I read the package, and it was like, they were technically CBD, but they had THC in them, and serving size was like one, and I ate eight. Oh my god, that's my worst nightmare. You don't understand. That's my worst nightmare. That is like, that's. I dosed myself. I dosed myself. Like, I tricked myself. And then I like thought I was like, I'm singing a half step up from where I'm supposed to be singing right now. Like I just you're fucking it was horrible. <laughs> Wait, but did but, but was it okay? Did you like what, like did nobody I... else knew what the fuck I was talking about? I was like, I'm I, I'm sorry that that show sucked. And they were like, What are you talking about? It's totally normal. It's all in your mind. Yeah. Oh, that terrifies me. That's like the last thing I'd ever want to do is get like stoned before a show because it's just like Dude, even getting like drunk at shows, I'm like, how? Yeah, you can't. Like, yeah literally like, same. Start already. Like I'm like, like <laughs> it would stress me out. Like one time, I like my foot. Like I did a New York headliner. This conversation is literally just about me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna carry on words. Um, yeah, I smoked. So it was first time in New York. Um, gonna play a headline show and never smoked like American weed get like take a toke off this one girl that was waiting in line like a massive toke I'm like it's gonna be fine she's like dude like why'd you take that big of a toke I'm like no it's fine it's fine and then I go in (laughs) and I'm like fuck I have a panic attack before I'm on stage I'm like fuck 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 I'm like crying to like my basis it was horrible and like oh god yeah no I'd never do it again it's so hard (laughs) Um, yeah, no, it was strange. If I'm being honest, like, literally, so that period, of, like, before we had to, like, start, like, preparing for the, well, it was recorded, it was mixed and mastered before, like, kind of, you know, pre- preparing, like, the aesthetic and, and everything and, and the photographs and whatever. You know, you, I had that period where I literally had nothing to do. Um, and, and I had corona. I literally had it. And it was, like, tough as fuck. Um and then I quarantined, moved in my boyfriend, quarantined there. And <clears throat> it was, yeah, there was nothing to do. I remember all we did was play GTA and get really high. That's all we did. And um, it was just nice, like, being with him and being with his brother, who's, like, around the same age and being, like, just having that company. And um, despite me thinking it was going to be horrible, um, because I wasn't playing any shows and blah, blah, blah. It was really nice kind of spending it with people I love. And, um, you know, I managed to learn how to bake. Um, <laughs> and to, well, my boyfriend, like, he directs my music videos. So he taught me how to, like, edit stuff. I mean, it sounds really dumb. But I, I've never, I don't know how to do that shit. So I mean, he, taught, he taught me how to edit on Final Cut Pro. And I was like, oh, this is cool. So it was, like, fun kind of learning new hobbies. Um, but... And it was, I'm not going to lie, if I kind of knew, if I was too focused on, you know, at what point my career was on and what was going on in my life, I think I'd freak out a bit. So it was nice having that distraction. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, well, I feel similarly, like I, I think it's hard to feel personally victimized by COVID because just being bored is lucky, you know, like just being like, like I feel Mm -hmm. One, I felt like being creative was like impossible. So I, the fact that I made something, made a record that I got to just talk about for my job instead of having to make a record for 
for my job made it way easier to like pretend to be a person every day than like trying to write King Lear or some shit. Mm-hmm. Like I just, I think that if I hadn't had any structure, like press and stuff, it's all been a lot and it's all been kind of overwhelming. But the fact that I like have a job right now is keeping me distracted yeah. from like, the void. And, uh, and yeah. And then I started, I fucking failed at baking. I suck at baking. I like made banana bread. <laughs> I swear, ten minutes later, it, it had like mold on it, <laughs> and uh, it was awful. And, but I did like start like going weekly with my therapist. I think I had had like, oh, I'll just hit up my therapist whenever I need therapy structure, and then mm-hmm. I had more structured therapy, and I've been pretty like strict about it to myself, um, and. And yeah, and it's, I think that the, I would have been lucky if I had come out of quarantine with like the same level of fans. You know, I really think I had yeah. this, like, they're going to go away. Like they're going to forget that I exist. Yeah. It's been so long since I put something out or mm-hmm. like, I'm going to stop being able to go on tour. So I just feel like ridiculously lucky. Like mm-hmm. we both kind of tapped into like new people hearing our music, which is insane. Like, yeah, insane. Mm-hmm. It has been blessed. Like I d- like do appreciate like this time. Like it could have been so much worse. It's like I, I'm really lucky that I managed to kind of finish. We both finished our albums kind of before everything had happened. So we just had to like, I mean, do everything we were supposed to do, um, but except minus tour and all that stress, minus like kind of you know being physically drained as well as you know like getting freaked out about <laughs> how fast everything was going. Um, but- Yeah, I'm glad, um, strangely, if that makes any sense, that I guess I managed to have this time to be bored and to do nothing. Like, the amount of series I've watched, like, and the movies, it's sick. I've watched, like, the whole Harry Potter. <laughs> like, did you, did you too? <laughs> so good. And Twilight. I did too! What? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> That's so mad. I rewatched Twilight like literally three weeks ago, and I okay. and I I gave my like actor friend my Hulu password because he didn't have it, and he or he didn't have a password or an account, and he wanted to watch some like beautiful art movie on my Hulu, and then like mm-hmm. so this art movie paused on my account, and then like every Twilight movie, it was like watch again. I was like, this is fucking humiliating, like. <laughs> Twilight no it's so good but you just like you honestly just notice so after watching a film like not seeing it for so long just notice how strange it is it's so weird but it was so entertaining during lockdown 100% recommend if you haven't abstinence porn it's literally (laughs) just like go with Jesus and find someone who will marry you before they fuck you and then they barely even fuck it's like cool the bed's broken (laughs) I think we've both been ripped off that Twilight wasn't coming out in our time because, like, you know we'd both be on that fucking soundtrack. A thousand percent. That soundtrack... I fucking wish. Yeah. Oh, imagine. I love that soundtrack. I really liked uh, Phoebe Bridges' Taylor Swift for people who's... uh, Or, no, Taylor Swift is Phoebe Bridges for people whose parents still love each other. That was my favorite one. Um, <laughs> or Phoebe Bridgers is Taylor Swift for girls who have crumbs in their bed. I have crumbs in my bed, so it makes sense. No, I like those memes. Um, I have never thought of it as like a replacement for fan interaction, but it's so, I think that hating it, I have this whole rant about how hating TikTok and, and social media is like classist. It's just how kids connect to music. It's like, so what if someone found music on TikTok it's accessible and it's Mm -hmm. like every it's like a community of people showing each other something who cares if it's an easy pill to swallow and it's like that's what's cool about it is you don't have to be in the fucking new york music scene listening to noise rock in a basement to know a band like it's like Mm -hmm. it's this thing that's like hey check this out also i feel like the internet is kind of an equalizer of like someone can go viral on fucking Bandcamp. Like, you don't even really necessarily have to be on streaming. Um, 
and especially in a time where you can't play shows, it's just like, it's everybody. I mean, I like look at my phone all day, so it's nice to have some connector. I already have a meme for if I, if I, or a tweet planned. If I, uh, if they don't give me a Grammy, I'm going to tweet, stop the count. That's my plan. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like I should spend more time thinking about music, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's jokes I guess I'm just like I don't yeah no it's a strange one because at, I remember at the beginning when like deathbed blew up and I like had no expectation was gonna blow up I was like yep it's blown up fuck and I it, it was I don't know it was kind of like weirdly like protective over that song it was like one of the first songs I'd ever written and so much people listening to it and it doesn't sound like the original and I'm just you know like an angsty like 19 year old girl that was like ah why does no one know real coffee <gasps> just being annoying and then I just realized how much it's like genuinely helped everything like it literally blessed me this whole year and I think it's cool as fuck that people can find music that easily on TikTok and I remember being that chick being like yeah like I'm never gonna go on TikTok like yeah but now I'm always on TikTok it's like yeah. no it's I think it's important just to like to know that the fact that music is people are listening to music people are interested in in that sort of shit is pretty badass so yeah I think also there's been I have like ranted about this in so many interviews but uh there's this tendency like obviously I'm super tight with Connor Oberst and he would get people would come up to him after shows and be like hey man like my girlfriend loves your music or whatever or just be like I think it's kind of stupid but my girlfriend loves it like there's this and I feel like the same with the 1975 where mm -hmm. people need to discredit music that teenage girls love yeah invented why it's cool and TikTok does kind of like tear that apart for me like mm -hmm. I risk being old guy on TikTok and I love that like I, I had I got TikTok last week because I've been so terrified to just be like hey hello fellow kids you know but uh I I think that like teenage girls invented the fucking Beatles you know like I think it's it's um I feel like they've always invented rock music and invented w where it goes and what happens with it so i think that a lot of social media is just an extension of that but there's obviously a dark side like i just always feel like i'm being devil's advocate for social media where i'm like yeah like i probably heard bright eyes from a starbucks cd compilation so i need to not uh <laughs> be like shitting on how people discover music yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, it's strange. There's such a weird stigma around that. It's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to say that I like that band because, you know, like, it's too popular and, like, only, like, teenage girls listen to it. I'm just like, yeah, shut the fuck up. Just say you listen to Beep Doobie, even though my name sounds really stupid. Just say it with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like a weird year to, to like, publicize that. And it is cool and whatever, but I also think that it's just the social, like, I, I just feel like music and every performance industry is so behind where most of the performers, like, people are realizing that they can capitalize on this, like, oh my God, like, it's all women or whatever, but one, it's predominantly white women. Two, it's a lot of them are in the performance seat instead of the administrative or production or management seat. And, uh, but I do hope that the, the, this kind of like, oh my God, we're inventing female music now thing just means that in 10 years, it won't be a fucking thing anymore. Um, mm -hmm. but also, yeah, like how many bands of like five white dudes can exist infinite amount. So the fact that like women have ever been pitted against each other is psychotic. Cause it's like, yeah, like totally what, I mean, God, how many bands just sound exactly like pavement, you know, that we're just mm -hmm. like, I'm going to be pavement again. I'm going to be pavement again. I'm going to be pavement again. And it's like more and more white dudes. So like people can rip each other off. People can sound exactly like each other. And, and the music industry has proved 
that they can coexist. Like, yeah. it's just true. So that's my speak on that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. I think that I think to be honest, like the louder we are now, like the the better it is in the future. And I guess like like as you as you were saying, like hopefully by doing this and you know encouraging more girls, and it won't be such like a like a like a thing to be classified as. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I'm just glad that girls are picking up guitars. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Everyone wants to play. I want to normalize. <laughs> being shitty at guitar because I exactly. guitar and I and like so does that like again so many rock bands like people just suck at guitar like you kind of have to suck at guitar a little bit to keep writing the same three chords over and over and not get bored with yourself so just lying on guitar shitty yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's just not like everyone's like oh you're like sick of guitar like I li- no like I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing like I don't even know what chord this is don't know what's called I literally have to tune my guitar so I can just play with one finger me too I do that too yeah I can't be asked to do so more than one finger so I'm just gonna tune it to a really nice sound and go with that yeah (laughs) 